Hello and welcome to this chapter on section access. So in the first part of security, we learn how authentication and authorization works. Nonetheless, it's important to revisit those two concepts. As I mentioned earlier, authentication involves obtaining user credential, verifying user credential using third-party identity provider, and those credentials then get transferred over to the proxy server, which creates a connection for user. At that point, user gets connected to ClickSend server, and then authorization begins. So there are two parts of authorization. One is for authorization to access ClickSense resources. And that is what we discussed in the initial part using security rules. And this security rules work on attribute-based access control, meaning user requests access to a resource and he or she will be granted access to the resource based on security rules. So we did have an overview of security rules for streams, application, and even down to object. At that point, user then gets access to the application. And at that point, Clicks and Sanjin start performing data reduction. So section access is all about data reduction for a particular user. Essentially, section access is part of your script that defines what user can see within the application. So as depicted in this example, for instance, if user A can only see product X, data gets reduced just for product X. So user will not be able to see product Y or Z. Same way, user B will see product Y and user C will product Z. In a layman term, you can imagine opening a ClickSense desktop, making a selection on product X, and as you know how associative model works, when you make selection on product X, the entire model gets reduced for that value. In nutshell, that is what ClickSense engine is doing behind the scene for you when you define a section access table, which has user and a column, and then the values that user can see. Section access also allows omission of a column. So you can hide a column from particular user if the column contains sensitive information. So that's in nutshell how data reduction work using section access. So taking a little deeper dive into the process, it starts with the user requesting access to ClickSense Hub from the browser. Then the ClickSense proxy server authenticates user and then creates a session. At that point, the authorization begins with security rules that allow user to have access to the application. And then as depicted in the diagram, step four is about data reduction for a particular user. And this data reduction is dynamic. Once that happens, then the application gets rendered to user in the browser. So let's look at a typical example of how section access works under the hood. So you as a developer create a section access table that has access column, user ID, group if you have AD group or Active Directory group and the column that you want to tie back to the data model. And again, remember the rule for section access requires that the column be in uppercase and values be in uppercase for association and data reduction. And then the last column is the omission column that you can use to hide a field from a user. In this example, we have territory code, and for each user, there's a specific territory code that they can have access to. Now, keep in mind, value star doesn't mean all values. Value star for territory code for user administrator means he or she can see AFG, ALB, BRA, meaning those values that are listed in the section access table and not necessarily all the values in the territory code field. And as shown on the right hand side, the result is that each user will see only value associated respectively for that user. So the process is simple, yet it's very powerful 
way to dynamically reduce the data set for a particular user for row level and column level security. So with that, we will go over some of the nuances of security in ClickSense that differs from ClickView, and then we'll look at an example using iPortal. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lecture.